Hello guys, how are you? I'm James. I'm gonna hopefully give you some uh, AFL betting advice for 2024. Uh, I usually stream. I don't make YouTube videos, so this is gonna be raw. I'm not gonna try and edit it, do whatever. We're just gonna whiz through because it's not my first time doing this. It, it takes it's way longer to do a video than I thought. So anyway, uh, by the way, this is for entertainment purposes. This is for fun. Don't do this. Um, this is just hypothetical bets. That we're going to do this year um but anyway let's just get into a little couple things oh first of all uh i do i've done super coach for like 12 13 years i've usually finished top thousand but i've been doing draft recently uh which is actually a nice change after doing classic uh it's good fun with friends um anyway so i actually don't bet on the results of the games because my tipping is awful i bet on the players so i'm usually more into the players and that actually worked out pretty well for me last year uh again we're just going to do this on the fly because i am not we fucked editing so last year uh we actually were up two thousand bucks from betting on afl which is freaking awesome uh the first month is always going to be pretty rough so i didn't bet much last year and then it ends up being like fuck, almost two thousand bucks a month that sounds like a lot but when you're doing like 50 bucks on every game it's it's a lot of money changing hands but don't worry about it uh so if we just stick to maybe the bets and the strategy i'm about to say uh you won't have months like this where i only ended up being up like was that 1200 for the year because uh we put it all we were playing with house money on marcus bond and belly so you know dude if he won the brown low we would have been we would have been sitting we've been eating good um but nah, unfortunately it's not the case so just a little heads up that you know don't get carried away we learn from our mistakes um let me close all this so let's get through some first little rules uh or just advice you know uh better value you're comfortable with so i might have said i picked it up last year i was doing like 50 bucks a game but i just sort of do one bet and think about that bet uh for the opening round there's four games i'm gonna do like 25 bucks each um knowing that march is usually a rough one but we might learn and get you know it'll, it'll increase and there'll be bonus bets and all those opportunities so we're just gonna start small uh, opening round uh be prepared to lose more bets than you win uh, that will most likely happen. You'll probably lose more than you'll win. But the way we bet with the odds we're going to do with and the minimal risk, hopefully, yeah, you'll just keep sort of uh, going positive. And if you start getting carried away and betting like a bunch on the same game and you're going to, it's not going to be fun. Um, and then that leads to my next one. Don't get stressed. Don't do this. If this freaks you out, don't watch a game and fucking i need my rent money if brayshaw gets another posse like this that's not the point of it um you want to be doing this comfortably you want to be able to watch footy and have fun um so don't do it if it, it gets stressed it might not be for you um or you know all those gamble responsibly ads this this could be a thing don't do it this year but we're just gonna have some fun with it um this is some entertainment uh follow along if you want uh okay that's the money stuff then we have betting tips so Hey, I'm back. I fucked up. So anyway, new me is saying the next one with the five times bets. And Oh yeah. So if you follow the strategy I'm implementing, having bets at $5 odds with relatively low legs, you only need one bet out of those five to break even. So if you're watching Thursday night fails, Friday night fails, Saturday fails, you'll have a game or oh, another one fail. Then your Sunday game goes up, you win you then break even. I know this all sort of, I'm just saying it slowly just to understand. So you will break even. Um, and that's what I mean by you will lose more bets than you place. You lose four, win one, break even. On the other side, <clears throat> all, all you have to do is win two of those to go positive. So if I win like the, the mi minority of my bets, I could still go positive. Yes, you could get unlucky and lose them all, but that's life. You could just fucking go L, 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 just, but that's unlucky. So um, I'm just trying to give the best advice so you don't get those L's. I might get those L's. We'll see. Um, uh, don't include all five bets from the same team. Oh yeah. So if we're doing three to five legs, 
Oh, look, three leagues is probably okay. You could have it on the same team, but just try and distribute it. Don't all have them on uh, all five legs in the midfield for like West Coast or something. And you have 20, 25 posies. It's just balance it out. Have a 15, have a 20, have a 15 and 20 from the other team. And then you're only sort of worried about that player from that position to get that. You're not having to watch all the midfielders fight for the footy. That's probably another thing uh, with the double dipping uh, point. So you don't want your players as well fighting for it. So if I have Lockie Neal and Josh Dunkley for 25, uh, I don't want to have to watch every stop and just be like, fuck, Lockie Neal, give it a... Du-. Like, it's just, I'd rather my mids get their posies and then a defender can get it or a four, whatever that I just... Or I need someone for 15. Um, I don't want that double dipping. It's the same with the goal kickers. I don't want two for Charlie Cameron. I don't want two for Joe Danaher. I don't want to... Like if Charlie kicks four, Joe kicks one, I, or some sometimes a one will kick none. It's like, don't I don't like double dipping in that field. I will pick one, move on. Our legs are small, so we don't have to double dip. Uh, avoid anything under one dollar ten value. So like a dollar ten is my limit. I won't go anything lower because it doesn't add value. In fact, it probably adds more risk. You're increasing your same game multi such a small amount for the likelihood of the player not reaching their posies, getting injured. And if your if your same game multi crumbles from someone at like under a dollar 10 value, it's you just it's so annoying. You hate yourself over it. You're like, "Why did I just add that player? It was so dumb." You want to find value and have a small refined bet. And that refined bet, I usually look in the 15 posy bracket because roughly 50% of the field will get 15 posies. So out of the 22, 22, or like, and the sub. So 46 players in total, roughly 23 of those players out there will get 15 posies. Now, obviously it gets smaller with um, 20 possessions. About 20 to 25 will get 20 possessions. And then 15% get 25. So that's like, could be three, four, five, well, not three, you, maybe a small amount of players will get 25%. And plus, they're the same player over and over again. So you're betting on like a Nick Dacos, a Bontempelli, a Darcy Parish, and they will be like very low odds. And I like going to the 15 posi bracket because there's more players to choose from, better value, and you don't have to rely on that same player to just pump it out. Like I could bet on Darcy Wilmont one week for 15 posies and then I could do Connor McKenna like another game and I don't have to just constantly back the same player. I can find the value depending on each week because there might be, like I might get into my bets and the player I usually bet on is no longer good value. So let's say, was that a smooth transition? I don't know, let's, let's see. But just say the player I usually bet on like Darcy Wilmont is at $1.40. I keep betting on them. They do well. They end up being like $1.15. Then I don't want to bet on that player anymore. In the 15 posi bracket, I can choose then Keaton Coleman. I can then choose uh, Connor McKenna. Like I have the opportunity to pick and choose who I want and get a better value or you have the ability to mix it up. With the high-end posies, you don't get that as much. Uh, I'm going to go into... Okay, I think that's all the betting advice, uh, money, betting, all that. We're getting into our actual bets. I'm not going to go over them like too in depth because a lot of them are the same reason. So I usually look for someone who's consistent. Um, and we're going to look at the post buy. Uh, so after their buys to the end of the year and how many times they might have dropped below their stats. Um, like for instance, someone, let's go to our first game. Yeah, this one actually breaks already my first rule. I went six legs purely because, I don't know, I just feel I have a hunch with Jack Billings. But anyway, you can take him out if you don't want him. And we will be looking at Rowbottom, Gorn, Bowie, Blakey, and Warner. So already, just ignore Billings, um, but this is a relatively small leg and it's $5 odds. So um, Rowbottom, Gorn, Bowie... Uh, was it the same with Blakey? Was he one? So, oh yeah, okay. All of them, oh, and Warner. So all of them went below 15. Chad Warner went below 20. They went below it twice. So other players might have a 
20 high 20 posi game and then like a 10 i don't want that um highs and lows i want someone who's relatively consistent so all these guys i feel like are pretty good again i'm not going to go into them too much but if row bottom it will be in the mid no uh luke parker no adams uh, Gorn gets a lot more of the footy. He's a good marking target down the line and it's Max Gorn. He's like the best, second best Ruckman now behind Tim English um, in super coach terms. Uh, but um, no Grundy too as well. Billings, I I don't know. I He's got no expectations. He's not coming in as that. The pick before Bond, just go out there, do your thing. Hopefully he does well. He looked good in the Pracky match and I kind of want to draft him. So I'm hoping he does well because I'm going to be watching him. So that's like my little extra. Uh, Blakey. Oh, I missed Bowie. Bowie was great all year. Bowie would just constantly get like bang on 15 or 16. And he is great odds. Like if I was to look at his odds right now, yeah, he was great. 15 posies. Bowie, $1.38. Yeah, so that was pretty good. Uh, really builds that same game multi. Blakey is teetering on my uh, no-go because he's $1.10. So I just really like uh, Blakey, the lizard. Um, he's just taking over that halfback distributor role, just running up the guts. He's going to get a lot of the footy. Uh, Chad Warner, he always gets 20, or, <laughs> except for the times, two times under 20. But yeah, he's going to be great. I think I've got Robottom and Warner, both different um expectations i feel like chad's gonna get more of the ball than row bottom so i don't feel like i'm double dipping too much there uh then i have blakey in the back line and then i also have three melbourne players so i've got half sydney half melbourne gorn in the middle and the ruck bowie half back jake billing uh, jack billings who knows let's see that's gonna be fun so that's my first bet for the round uh i'm gonna edit this here i'm gonna take a phone call and come back see you soon all right so i took that phone call that was like two hours doing super coach draft and then watched survivor so now it's like 11 o'clock on a work night so i'm gonna whiz through this i apologize um brisbane carlton oh i cannot wait yeah, i'm so keen um yeah again all these players mcgovern wait let me check my actual bet yeah here we go we have a five leg uh here darcy wilmont mcgovern berry mccarthy oh yeah so i usually don't have regular goal scorers but i will have Link had two games with no goals after the buys. So he is most likely kicking one, but he is not some short price like Hipwood, Danaher, Charlie, even Zach Bailey. Like Link is like the fifth, sixth, I think fifth uh, in the goal kicker, anytime goal kickers for Brisbane. And he is quite regular. So he those players like that um are usually the goal kicker exceptions and i have one for gws later but anyway the rest of this one wilmont for 15 is great took a lot of kickouts last year always just running off the outside the square and that is the same for mcgovern berry playing on the wing will usually get 15 posies no issue and joe danaher this people are like what the fuck you got danaher in for 15 posies he averaged 16 disposals at the gabba last year and I don't know, like, I just, there's something about Joe Danaher where you're like, there's just, he's, there's no way, he's gonna get like seven posies. If he gets seven posies this weekend, I, whatever, but he usually will pinch it in the ruck, he'll do those things, you know, where you, you go up for the ruck, he'll just grab it and then swing around and just belt it, kick it off the ground, whatever the heck, anytime he touches it, it's, oh, and he's a marking target um, down the line too, so I... I'm confident with Joe, but he was presenting more value. So add him in, boost it to $5. Uh, let's go. Um, Gold Coast Richmond. So um, again, same thing. If I go to Gold Coast Richmond. Uh, oh, I, I wanted Will Powell, but he was too short at $1.15. And I didn't want to risk um, him at... But he was too short for 15 posies, but not good enough. Uh, too much for 20 posies. So, short, Ainsworth, uh, McPherson, Landers, Rioli. So, we have two Richmond and three Gold Coast. Flanders, I, literally, I think Flanders had no... Oh, shit. I did Flanders for plus 25. I wrote down he had no under 20s post buy, And I've chucked him in for 25. Um, Jaden Short had two under 20 disposals all year, excluding 
got subbed. Uh, Daniel Rioli was the same, two under 15. Um, and McPherson, two under 15. We're going to swing over to GWS Collingwood. Um, Addy Lipinski, two under 15 buys, and he tore up in the preseason, so he's looking good. Brent Daniels, uh, after coming back from in injury, just one under 15 posies, and he is playing more on ball. Um, Callum M. Brown is the other player I was talking about where uh, he might be, I think it was $1.40 odds for uh, any time goal kicker, and he only missed... Uh, there was two games where he didn't have a goal. So again, I like the a value player who's actually playing up forward and most likely will kick a goal. Um, Isaac, Qua oh, Collar Idon uh, was just consistent again. Two games with no uh, under 15 Aussies. Um, the one that this kind of goes against my thing, Isaac Quainor has four games under 15 Aussies, but him and Oleg uh, Markov, I, I really like Markov, but uh, just a bit too inconsistent. So Isaac Quainor... Um, yeah, I, I know that is, that's probably actually more risky than the Joe Danaher one. But again, it's value trade-off and we can get um, $5 odds there. So I'm still quite confident in these. We have four bets. Sorry, I rushed it um, to the end of it. We'll have a recap. Um, if, yeah, we might do like a tally or something throughout the year, but just bearing in mind that March is pretty rough. So um, yeah, guys, good luck. There's the four bets. Uh, we will keep tabs and I'll try and do a video like once every week, whether it's Wednesday, Thursday before um, each round starts. But yeah, we'll see. Good luck. Have fun, guys. Uh, enjoy footy. It's back, baby. All right. See you guys. Bye.